it's gotta suit you i think it's gotta go with your personality i don't think a girly girl or when i'm feeling very girly flirty wearing pink i'll be wearing this this is for more deep dark mysterious days you know welcome back to my channel if you're new i am for glaze please consider subscribing and clicking on the notification bell so you know each time i put out a video today's video i'm sharing with you some of what i think are the most unique fragrances in my collection i'm so excited to share with you what they are because yeah they're a bit odd and different our first perfume is alien which we know and love i will briefly just talk about it it did come out in 2005 from the house of mugler and it was intended to be an oriental floral fragrance they excessively used two notes so to speak so there's ember and cashmere. So cashmere is like a chemical compound that they use in fragrances. It gives off this, yeah, floral, woody, warm vibe, which can be a bit natural and synthetic at the same time. And then there's ember, and ember is a scent created using different ingredients as well. It just smells like wet dirt and spices like heavy on spice there's vanilla balsamic and all those fit into the cashmere and category i really like it i don't wear it as much actually it was like at the back of the cupboard where i keep all my fragrances so i had almost forgotten about it but it is definitely one of the most unique scents out in the market Mugler creates a lot of unique fragrances. If you're looking for unique at an affordable price, designer kind of category, Mugler is a great brand to go to. And they're very strong, they're potent, and the sillage is great. It is very good. I don't know how well the reformulated versions wear or if they are that much different, but I'm sure the ingredients are a little bit different more cost effective in the reformulated versions but be careful if it does have oils not to spray it directly to your clothes because some of them will leave a stain i actually realized the other day that i have like a bit of discoloration just behind my ear from spraying fragrances and i i'm suspecting some of the more affordable with more alcohol in them have caused this discoloration on my skin because i do have sensitive skin so now i have to be cautious i'm going to try and spray my finger instead and just dab just like that so that i don't get like the harsh direct spray of the fragrance just be cautious and yeah that's alien by mugler alien oud majesture from the house of mugler and i really like the presentation here i think this fragrance has the best presentation from the mugler house so they were going for like a gold sophisticated look it's so pretty as you can see there's a similar theme here the bottles are so beautiful and unique it's like a similar dna um, they both have cashmere they both have sandbag jasmine, uh, which is like the sunflower. So Oud Majestu has more of a masculine composition. So it has coffee notes, it has woody notes, it has leather notes and spices. So it is definitely a lot more potent than the original Alien. This is winter vibes for me it has oud in it and which the alien does not so the oud stands out in this one the leather yeah it is for women but it's more masculine it's very potent i have not smelled anything like this before of course the ingredients are similar to other fragrances um you know leather spices and so on but it definitely does take its own stage as you can see i have not used a lot of it because you need to be brave to wear this and honestly i also bought it for the packaging i have not worn it but i will wear it in winter months and i will wear something sweet over the top i will layer this fragrance because it's just too heavy 
too masculine for my liking. My next fragrance is Mosque Rovageau from the Frederick Mal House. And this one is by Maurice Roussel. It's 100 ml. And this is unique and special because there's nothing else that smells quite like it. Um, of course, there are imitations of it now, you know, um, brands that are inspired by it and have created something else. But the DNA is quite original. Of course, the ingredients cannot be original because um, it's the same kind of ingredients used in other fragrances, but it's just how they blend them that makes um, the fragrance unique. Top notes, lavender, bergamot, it's really strong. It's a bit more masculine than feminine. It, it's not feminine at all, um, but it's unisex. It does lean more to the masculine side for me because it's not as floral, it's not as sweet, it's not, you know, light and airy, um, which is what I would classify those types of perfumes as feminine. This is more masculine. I mean, I've explained all of that. It's a little bit raunchy, but it definitely fits in this category because I don't have anything that smells quite like this and it confuses people. You gotta be in the right scenario for it to work. Otherwise it could be offensive or people could just think you, you smell not that great. They will know that it's perfume, but they wouldn't understand why you picked that one in particular. It's for acquired taste. It's unique. It's very powerful, wide sillage and all those great things. You will walk in and you will stand out. It's got to suit you. I think it's got to go with your personality. I don't think a girly girl or when I'm feeling very, you know, girly, flirty, wearing pink, I'll be wearing this, not at all. Um, yeah, this is for more deep, dark, mysterious days, you know, kind of vibes. But I like it, I love it. I plan on collecting more from this house. I don't wanna end up with reformulated perfumes from them, although I don't think that can be avoided, but I'm gonna still get them. So, the next fragrance is from the same house. This is a portrait of a lady from the Frederick Mal house. Um, this particular one was created by Dominique Rapion. And this is also another acquired taste. Someone starting out with fragrance is not going to like this, honestly. But if you can understand the complexities of ingredients in fragrances, then you will love this. You will think of it as something special because um, perfumers really appreciate this kind of creativity. It's like back in high school, my music teacher taught me how to listen and break down music. So now when I listen to music, it's in stages that I can appreciate each instrument in the song. It just makes the listening go up to another level. Do you know what I mean? Like, so it's the same with fragrances. Um, you train your nose, you smell different authentic scents and raw ingredients, and you'll be able to pick them out when you smell different fragrances and be able to tell whether that ingredient is the natural version or the synthetic version, because there's some ingredients that are really hard to source out. So perfumers just create a version of it in the lab, of course, and use it in their fragrances to imitate a certain ingredient. Anyway, portrait of a lady. It is original. There are many fragrances copying this. Um, the florals in here, it's really nice. You should go out and explore the Frederick Mal house and try all the different scents. I have a few on my wish list. I have Un Rose. Iris Poudre. I have a few of them that I really want to get just because they're good quality and they're gonna last me forever. It's like my Baccarat, like it's gonna last me forever. And those are the types of scents I like in my collection. Classics, I've got some Chanel's, you know, that type of vibe. Portrait of a Lady, go give it a go. It is definitely unique. My next fragrance that I consider unique 
is Oud Bouquet, which is popular and loved for a reason. It's a sweet oud, woody. It's got agarwood, it's got praline, it's got rose, um, saffron. Saffron is spicy, so it's got that element in there. This is really unique, okay? Um, there are plenty of oud fragrances, but when it comes to being unique, this was definitely one of them. Now, of course, there's flankers, which I have here. There's even a flanker of oud bouquet itself. Comes in a similar bottle, but I don't have it with me. Um, yeah, and Lautra Oud also was inspired by Oud Bouquet. I have had people smell this on me and not like it. And I've also had people who just could not stop smelling me, who loved it. Of course, you know, people have different olfactory sensitivity. So, you know, to you, the rose might stick out. Somebody else smells it, the Oud might stick out more and it could irritate different people in different ways okay so yeah it just has this instancy vibe so if you're not into instancy smelling scents I mean still give it a try but it might not be your your vibe I love this in the winter months and sometimes when I'm being naughty I will wear it on a cloudy day summer spring whatever um, and then just top up with another sweet scent over the top and yeah I feel like I will always have this in my collection and it's gonna take me a while to go through this because the original Oud Bouquet is potent okay it has more oils in here we'll let it dry and when you spray it on you you can see the oils so my next fragrance is Coco from Chanel now the Coco Noir, I can't say that's unique as such, as much as Coco is. This one is a spicy fragrance for women, but you know, men can wear it as well. It does have that unisex vibe. I just picked this one out from Chanel as the most unique. I mean, Chanel number no. five, when it came out, it was unique back then um, but now you know there's so many flankers and so on um, and Coco you know is not as unique as it was at some point but it does fit in this category from my fragrances I think these ones are the leaders you know kind of the leaders of the pack yeah if you have not tried Coco, go and smell it. I just think Chanel is also one of those brands that you can go and find different range or different types of fragrances for year round or different events. It's a one brand that has all round a sense, okay? Uh, they can meet all kinds of different needs. I think Lancome is like that as well. I mean, there's a few brands. So if you're starting in fragrance and you've got a bit of money, Go ahead and check out Chanel scents and pick out what you like best and go from there. Coco is quite unique. This is Bond number no. 9 Asta Place. This is quite unique. It is a bright floral musky scent, okay? It is a very feminine, classy, more classy and sophisticated than really like girly feminine you know yeah this is a sophisticated lady this is a grown woman this is an intelligent woman okay um, it's unique because the way they blended the ingredients here is amazing it's not like Marc Jacobs scents or anything like that I mean you're paying a pretty penny for this perfume and the oils as well you can see them when you spray on yourself it is great quality okay when you're wearing this you smell like a quality sophisticated woman so it's great for the office it's great for every day or signature scent or number nine Astor place my next fragrance in this collection of unique fragrances is Shalima when it came out it was quite unique for the Guerlain brand. It goes up there with Chanel number no. five. It is such a classic. 
many fragrances that have been inspired by this particular perfume of course it's in this category I really like it this is a grown woman whatever grown means to you I do like to wear age-appropriate scents as well but when I'm feeling like don't mess with me I'll be wearing Chanel or Shalimar business meetings or if you're over 30 or 35 you know it'll just suit your um, your age group as well but of course I love it as well even in my 20s so my next fragrance is E2 by Alexandra J um, Atelier de Artistes collection it's got art drawings on it on the bottle so this is a musky ylang ylang kind of scent it's a floral it is headache inducing if you don't like these types of fragrances every time I go to pick it out it's never the right day or the right seasonal weather you know I don't want to wear this on a very hot day I think it will give me a headache because there are heavy floors in here and you can tell they're good quality but they're too potent even the color of the juice just tells you that there is so much floral in here and as you know I'm not really a floral person and there's no sweetness in here that I can really detect or the kind of sweetness that I like it's not as powdery as I would like but anyway it is definitely unique the bottle is unique the smell is unique so I know it has tuberose um, it should have um, grapefruit tangerine you can tell I never bothered to really learn about it but maybe I should I know there will come a day when I will use it um, and I'll obviously probably layer it as well but yes it definitely goes into the unique sense because it is unique I've smelled a lot of fragrances okay and I haven't quite smelled anything like this one hopefully there'll be other ones that I like more for now this is definitely unique the last fragrance I will mention today is Elixir de Marvelis so Amaze Paris has this wonderful ambery fragrance okay this is definitely for colder months colder days autumn winter it is barely fresh okay very long lasting it has like lingering effects it is unique because it's a different type of amber um, it has some um, uh, vanilla you know sugary vanilla in there um, caramel it's got the zestiness from um, like the orange peel so it's it's fresh so it's nice but anyway it's a good ember oh, sophisticated I mean you can't have it as a signature scent like I said it's a little bit too heavy too seasonal you know um, it's perfect for winter so yeah I love this it smells so clean like just clean and warm spicy like the autumn leaves you know just like the orange color it's got a bit of zest in there it's got the so yeah spicy woods some florals you know you know how my vibe is but yeah it's definitely unique I'm sure I have others but we could have been sitting here for too long okay because I like the vintage unique I like something original I like the classics of a line so of course most of my fragrances are gonna be just like that go ahead and check out my other videos and I will link some in the description box I uh, hope to connect in the comment section